Hi, I'm Maureen Garrity, a Naples pastel artist, and this painting here is entitled Mayaca Vista. And this painting was inspired by a visit to Mayaca State Park here in Florida. And it was a very windy day, and I just loved the clouds going by and the way the trees were leaning a little bit and the shadows on the water. The reflections were just beautiful. So this is Mayaca Vista. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Valerie Gusaini and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my painting, The Nest. I've often used found materials in my paintings and it was no different this time. I was inspired actually by a cardinal's nest that was just outside my studio door and the beautiful way that they wove that nest and that it held them so tightly enclosed, protected from the outside world, was an inspiration for me for this painting. During this period, the last six months when we've been stuck in our homes and fearful of what is out there, or if we do go out there in the outside world, uh, we could be exposed to this virus. Uh, I feel like I was really influenced when I decided to do this painting. I wanted to create something that showed a circular image of keeping us all safe in one little place, something very tightly woven. And the colors were, uh, I was very influenced by my mood at the time when I was painting this. Traditionally, I use very bright colors in all of my works. And so this was uh, a deviation for me. And uh, yet, I think it really explained in, in many ways the tonality of how I was feeling when I painted this. Very kind of dark and foreboding because that's how I felt. And I think that that's what is so nice about art because that's what it can do. It can express to others through our work how we're feeling, what we need, and what the art is giving us. So. That's something that I think describes this work entirely. Thank you. I'm Christy Noonan, and this is one of a series of Clam Pass Boardwalk. It's a very unique place here in Naples, Florida, where you can see the three mangroves in their natural habitat. In the six tenths of a mile, you see the red, the white, and the black mangroves all living together. The black are some of my favorite. To me, they have such a oriental exotic flair to them. They kind of interact with each other with a stately uh, feeling of tranquility. They have uh, very sturdy, strong, dark trunks that range from black to like a cool raw umber brown and into the charcoals. Their trunks are very textured like an elephant's hide and their leaves are two-toned. On one side there's a soft olive green and on the other side it's very silvery green. The silvery green um, on the underside of the leaf has little salt crystals that they excrete from the salt water through the bottom of their leaves. And underneath them, in like the tidal shores, um, they have little nodes that stick up from the ground, and that's where they breathe. There was a place in Hakone, Japan, that reminded me of this beautiful, incredible space that's very meditative. It brings out a feeling of tranquility and solid security and of reverence for this beautiful natural flora of Naples, Florida. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Julie Seiler Olander, an artist from Bonita Springs, Florida. 
I've painted over a thousand landscape paintings in various mediums during my professional career. I work in several mediums because I love to experiment and because of my background as an art teacher. I love nature and painting out of doors. And Florida has such a wide variety of animals and insects as well as birds and the foliage here is so diverse that it's quite challenging to paint scenery. Everything's so green and that makes it hard to create distance. So one of the things I like to do is over exaggerate color. I'm lucky enough to live in an area where there are several wildlife preserves. And one afternoon I was painting a landscape as sunset approached and the colors just kept getting more and more vivid as the evening went on. So I stayed as long as the sun did and I witnessed the most beautiful sunset with pink striations in the sky and the water below in the lagoon area. Benita Lagoon is the resulting landscape painting of that beautiful day. I'm Jackie Zorn. Thank you for taking a moment to look at my work. When I was very young, I remember traveling with my mother from Chicagoland to our nation's capital, and we viewed the fantastic museums on the mall. I remember literally being pulled out of my stroller by these masterworks that communicated something about the human spirit. And I knew that I, I wanted to be a part of the conversation to add something. Well, fast forward years, years later, I went to art school, but when I got out, I started working in the museum field. And I was thrilled to be surrounded by modern and contemporary masterworks for years. I kept up my own painting a little, but I became very hard on my own mark making. I often found refuge in nature, like so many do. And I started to combine the two out of necessity for um, mental health reasons, and also because of space issues, uh, you know, living in a small apartment in Florida. I began taking my paintings with me on paddleboard excursions. There was something about the movement of the water that I found very helpful in terms of freeing me up, being more forgiving of my own mark making. And it allowed me to have that interaction with the paint and the canvas um, that got me going, that got me into that state of flow. Good afternoon. My name is Muffy Clark Gill and I'm an artist who works in boutique and mixed media. And I wanted to show you my painting that I call Mar Azul Tortuga. I created this tapestry using the ancient wax resist process known as boutique, along with adding other dyed fibers that were repurposed from other paintings that I'd created, then fused together to make a new image. The green turtle, which is the centerpiece of the work, is a Florida native that has a special place in my heart because of my sister-in-law, Betsy Sandstrom, who was a turtle conservation activist. After her death from cancer, her family and friends petitioned the Conservancy of Southwest Florida to name their new baby turtle that were residing in their nature center, Betsy, in memory of her. I created the turtle using the Japanese wax resist process known as Rosome and embellished it with embroidery. The turtles in the corners of the piece were from another small stencil I had created, cut, and then batiked, sewing it to the piece using Japanese-style shashiko stitching. Layers of dyed fabric scraps were laminated to the felt packing that's made from recycled plastic bottles. The hanging rods are made from bamboo, a sustainable wood product. I hope you will visit my websites, muffyclerkgill.com, and mcgilltropicalart.com where you can see more of my paintings in my nature collection as well as subscribe to my travel blogs and my art blogs and my love of art, travel, and nature. Thank you. Hello, 
my name is Julie Peckerel and I'm a self-taught artist. Initially I specialized in photography and I've been in over a dozen jury exhibitions, but recently in the last three years I've turned to mixed media and pastels. So I've submitted a piece called Seed Heads, which is altered papers and ink, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I had fun making it. Thank you. I am Megan Dalzell, and this is my oil painting, Eye of the Apex. This painting was inspired by my own personal relationship with one of the most iconic species to be found here in Florida, the American alligator. I am a Naples native, and my father was also raised here. He spent a significant portion of his life doing permitted alligator hunting. Years ago, I got my permit and went hunting with him. Now, when you're in the middle of the Everglades in the pitch black of the night, with sawgrass and unseen wildlife teeming all around you, the only indication you have of the alligators as you hunt is the reflection of your spotlight off of their eyes. You learn to judge the distance between those two lights and their eyes to determine if that alligator is of sufficient size to pursue. Today, my dad and brother have both shifted their focus and are nuisance alligator trappers and relocators for the state. They work with FWC to ensure that alligators and people in the area can coexist as safely as possible. And this involvement has increased the reverence that we, as a family, have always had for the alligator species. The other part of my personal history that informed this piece is my interest in fossil hunting. My family spends several weekends a year camping along the Peace River hunting fossils, and we have a particular interest in the Pleistocene fossils from when Florida was no longer completely covered by salt water. We have found teeth from Columbian mammoths and osteoderms from glyptodonts, all of these fascinating species that had their time to roam here in Florida and then, for whatever reason, climate change, the introduction of new species, human intervention, they could not evolve and the sun set on their time here. With alligators though, we find teeth from that same time period and not only are the alligators still here, but they are nearly unchanged and thriving. The species has withstood the test of time and evolved to remain at the top of the food chain in a constantly changing ecosystem. And that makes them a true apex predator. Hello, my name is Martha Cantu. The title of my piece, or the name of my piece, is Los Nymphides, which is Spanish for the lilies or the lily pads. It is a 12 by 24 inch oil on canvas, and it was inspired, or I, I should say I got the inspiration for them during one of my morning jogs. I tend to jog towards Lake Trafford out here in the Mockley. And during one of those jogs, I stopped in this shady area and happened to look down on this creek and I noticed this uh, memorizing uh, patch of lilies. I had been trying to catch those lilies in bloom. Um, I haven't done so yet, so wish me luck. I'm hoping to do a series on the lily pads as every time I go and I take a different photo, they seem to be moving. Um, some of them die off, new ones come in, but I still haven't caught those lilies yet. So hopefully I can do a series on them, just different lighting, different times of the day. I think it's so mesmerizing. So I took several photos and I, looking back on them, I've never really thought that the photos done them justice or captured them just right. And so I was inspired to paint them. Hopefully I did them a little justice. I, I can't say, I don't know. I'm so hard on my own, own work, but it's one in a series. So. We'll see if I can get to the rest sometime. Hope you like them. Hello, my name is Maureen Garrity, and I am a pastel artist living and working in Naples, Florida. And this painting is titled, No Place Like Home. And the inspiration for this painting was my own little backyard. So during COVID, when we were all stuck at home, I decided to paint a path in my backyard that I have been working on as uh, 
an avid gardener, I've been trying to make a bromeliad lime path through my the back half of my property. And I really enjoyed the shadows that the trees were making across the path. And thus the title, No Place Like Home. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jackie Zorn, and I just wanted to speak for a moment or two about my paddleboard abstractions. Being on the backwater allows me to free myself up um, and observe the beauty of nature as a starting point to my mark making. As I mentioned before, um, sometimes that can be an issue of stress, and I can't emphasize enough the importance of being in nature for my practice. I don't start with a plan. I allow space for the work to show me what it's going to be about. Often the abstractions will later make sense to me, but that's certainly not intentional. I can't emphasize enough how important unspoiled spaces are um, to me and my practice and I think for everyone every being. So I thank both organizations so much for their tireless work. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laurel Schmid. I'm a full-time artist here in the Naples Art District. And today I wanted to tell you a little bit about what inspired me to paint Misty Dawn. Misty Dawn is a 48 by 48 original. The, the original painting was done in acrylic. I utilized um, various size brushes, mostly larger brushes, along with um, some palette knife work. And I incorporated some textural elements down here in the water area as well. The painting was inspired um, on a weekend where we were on our sailboat and we were moored out on Cayo Costa State Park. And the following morning, this just beautiful sunrise happened um, that created some soft, subtle hues of blue and a really beautiful glisten to the water. And um, I just loved the effect that happened um, as, as the mist rose and the sun started to come out. It just was, it just was beautiful. So that's what inspired this painting. Um, I hope that you enjoy it, and thanks so much for listening. Hi, my name is Julie Peckrell. I'm a self-taught artist specializing in photography. In the past two years, I've branched out to mixed media, and the piece I submitted today titled Mangrove Moon is a monotype with acrylic ink. Thank you for your consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Monique. Thank you so much for the opportunity to allow me to share a glimpse of this painting. This painting is titled Precise Harmony. I used acrylic on canvas, inspired in the flora and fauna found here in Florida. Thank you so much for the opportunity and I hope that you enjoy this painting. Thank you, bye bye. My name is Linda K. Hinkle, and the title of my painting is Aquatic Jamboree. I enjoy abstract art, which requires the viewer to draw their own conclusions about what they're seeing, and then try to determine what the artist might be saying in the painting. I started this painting just loving the colors with no idea where it would take me. As I painted, fish profiles kept popping up, and so it is, aquatic jamboree. 
my two years of self-instruction with books and YouTube learning to paint, plus taking some lessons from some very good artists in Naples, is just the beginning for me. I love what I do. It's rewarding and inspirational. My name is Marty Kohler. I'm a Naples, Florida artist, and I work in oils, acrylics, and mixed media. This painting behind me is called Ibis in Flight. I produced this painting for the Rookery Bay and United Arts Council juried show, entitled Natural Selection. In this painting, I've used the Ibis birds to represent a species that exists in Rookery Bay. Of this group of birds, which one will survive? That's the natural selection question that I was thinking about when I was painting this. In these groups, there are often the young, adolescents, and the more mature, and, and babies. So there's a chance for all to thrive and a chance for all to meet their demise. Each environment that the birds thrive in and that is necessary for them to thrive is shown here, metaphorically. They're in their airspace currently, but here this area, this division of the canvas represents the earth space, the land, and this represents the water space, the microorganisms, the things that they dig for, for their food. All of these things have to work in communion for these birds and other species to survive and thrive. It's up to us to try and promote that. And as artists, we have an awesome opportunity to teach that through visual means. Hope you enjoy. I have some flight. Hi there, my name is Muffy Clark Gill and I'm an artist who works in boutique and mixed media. Jellies is a mixed media collage featuring a local sea creature, the jellyfish. To create this painting, I repurposed scraps of boutique and dyed fabrics and then glued together the strips to a canvas backing and added jellyfish made from more silk scraps on top of the strips to give a feeling of underwater depth. Thanks for joining me while I talk about my painting titled Jellies. My name is Muffy Clark Gill, and you can see more of my work on my website at muffyclarkgill.com and also purchase works from my collection at mcgilltropicalart.com. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Monique. Thank you so much for the opportunity to allow me to share a glimpse of my artwork with you. The title of this painting is Beyond the Light. I used acrylic on canvas using a spatula knife. This was a meaningful project as it brought hope and encouragement from one of my main sources of inspiration, which is nature. And I also found it fun because I was able to play with textures and forms on the canvas surface. And I really hope that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for the opportunity and enjoy a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I am Megan Delzell, and this is my painting, Secrets of the Deep. This painting was inspired by my love of Floridian ocean life and the unique feeling that one can only experience when observing that life from beneath the waves, something that I have had the good fortune to do a great deal of as I have spent my lifetime residing in Florida. 
My family has always been a very ocean-oriented one, and from a young age, I have felt magic and wonder when free diving with ocean life, particularly the vibrant and diverse species of the Florida Keys. To those familiar with shark species, if you look very closely, you can see that this particular shark silhouette appears to be most similar to that of a great white shark. This may seem a strange choice for representing the essence of Florida wildlife, but this selection was deliberate. Although many people assume the great whites are not native to Florida, the truth is they are seen off of Florida's coast fairly regularly. Just this year, reports of a particularly large 20-foot shark swimming close to Florida's shores made headlines. In fact, there are usually several reports from divers of great white sharks in Florida's waters every year during the winter months. Therefore, I feel that this species perfectly represents just how diverse and surprising Florida's natural array of wildlife can be, holding secrets even for those who have lived here their entire lives. One unique aspect of this painting is the method I use to create the background. The process involved a black canvas coated in liquid clear and covered with transparent oils so that the canvas appeared entirely black until I started to paint the light with purely white paint. As the white touched the black canvas, it revealed the deep hues that were hidden by the darkness in a method that mimicked actual sunlight filtering through the ocean depths and revealing the surprising secrets below. I'm Mary Lagarde, and I'm an artist in Naples, Florida. This is my painting, Naples Before the Storm. The size of my painting is 36 inches by 60 inches, and it is painted oil on canvas. This painting was painted two days before Hurricane Irma hit our beaches in Naples, Florida. Two days before the surf was getting kicked up, so I rushed down to the beach so I could check it out and see what was going on. On my walk to the beach, I could feel the, the sea mist hitting my face and sand was starting to blow around and the waves were crashing in. I thought it was quite beautiful because the sky had such an enormous blue to it. In addition, I came across these four ibis birds frolicking and foraging in those waves. I thought they were kind of funny so I decided to stop and study them for a while, watch their behavior. They were desperately trying to get steady while they were digging for the little clams that they like to eat. And they were banking left and right. And with the waves all crashing in and the smell of the sea foam in the air, it just was such a magical little moment. I thought I'd take this home and paint it to always have that memory. I hope this painting does bring you the memory of how beautiful our beaches are here in Naples, Florida. Hi, I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about my painting, Alligator Envy. This is a painting that is inspired from a adventure that I took with three girlfriends to the Everglade Wonder Park in Bonita Springs. We were there on a, a rainy afternoon and we happened to be feeding the alligators near the lagoon there. The whole place was covered with this green moss. There were alligators everywhere and um, a lot of them were underwater, hidden, and when you'd throw food into them, they would come up to the surface, really crazy, and um, it became almost like a feeding frenzy. However, over in this one section of the lagoon, there was this one alligator. He was just calmly sitting there in the water, only his face and head showing, with his eyes boring into anybody who was looking at him, and um, it just made a perfect picture. You know, the water would create these swirls when raindrops would hit it and things. And so we happened to take a photo and when I saw the result from the photo, it was, I was really inspired to do a painting of it as a kind of a memento of the day. And it's something very um, 
indicative of Florida, the alligators, the green moss. It was interesting when I was doing the painting and using the photograph as my uh, reference, so many of other eyes of the alligators would come forward that I didn't happen to know were there. And so it was, they were hidden in the depths of the, the moss. And so that was an interesting thing that came out. Even here, you could see them. And here, just sections of alligators that came through. And so, um, you know, it was a, a painting that I had a lot of fun doing. And the title, Alligator Envy, obviously came from the green of the moss and the idea that there were these other alligators peeking their way through all the time, trying to also intimidate the viewer. So this is um, my painting, Alligator Envy.